Many people imagine that science is bound to be merely descriptive, and therefore one person's values can only trump another person's values by, by seeking consensus. There's no, you, all you have are, are differing opinions. And, there, and all such opinions are in principle on par. But this isn't true. There are many ways for my values to be wrong. Uh, but they can be wrong with respect to deeper values that I hold, or would hold if I were only a deeper person. They, my, my values can be objectively bad guides to finding happiness in this world. I can value things that will reliably make me miserable, or make those I love miserable. Things can be right or wrong independent of a person's current values. Now, some of you might worry that I haven't defined well-being with sufficient precision. How can, how can this loose concept be uh, the ground out of which we talk about moral truth? Well, consider by analogy the notion of physical health. Physical health is very difficult to define, and, and, it, and its, its definition seems to always be con only contextually true. You can expect to live to be 85, 90 without Alzheimer's. A hundred years ago, you could expect to live to the ripe old age of 40 or 50. It, it changes, and it could change to a great degree in the future. What does health mean? So it has something to do with not always vomiting has something to do with not being in excruciating pain. And this is, these are very loose criteria for health. And yet this does not make the concept of health vacuous at all. It certainly doesn't make it merely the product of culture or merely the product of, of personal whim. And no, notice that no one ever attacks the philosophical underpinnings of medicine with questions like, well, who are you to say that not always vomiting is healthy. What if you meet someone who wants to vomit? What if you meet someone who wants to vomit until he dies? How would you argue that he's not as healthy as you are? Yes, the very notion of health contains certain values. This does not make medicine unscientific. And I would argue that in talking about morality, we are actually talking about psychological health and the health of societies. The truth of this, this fact value uh, issue actually reaches deeper than that because science has always been in the values business. We simply cannot speak about facts without embracing certain values. It's not, it's not that you can't get an ought from an is, you can't get an is without embracing certain oughts. And consider the simplest statement of scientific fact. Water is two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. And this, this seems to be as value free and utterance as human beings ever make. Okay, but what do we do when someone doubts the truth of this proposition? What if, what if someone comes forward and says, well, I'm sorry, but that's not how I choose to think about water. Okay, what if someone says, I'm a biblical chemist and I read in Genesis 1 that God created water before he created light, which in fact it says in Genesis 1. So therefore there were no stars to fuse hydrogen and helium into heavier elements like oxygen. So there would have been no oxygen to put in the water. So God either made, either there's no oxygen in water or God made special oxygen. And I don't, I don't believe he'd do that because that would be biblically inelegant. What, what could we possibly do with such a person? All we can do is appeal to scientific values. And if, if a person doesn't share those values, the conversation is over. We, we, we must appeal to the value of understanding the world, the value of evidence in this case, some hundreds of years of, of evidence in chemistry, the value of logical consistency. Much of what we believe about the world is predicated on the validity of our beliefs about the structure of water. If someone doesn't value evidence, what evidence are you going to provide that proves they should value it? If someone doesn't value logic, what logical argument could you invoke to prove that they could value logic? Just as we don't have Christian physics, though the Christians invented physics, and we don't have Muslim algebra, though the Muslims invented algebra, we at some point will not have Christian and Muslim morality. The, the truth has to float free of these uh, uh, provincial ideas. What, what remains for us to discover are all the facts that relate 
to genuine questions of human well-being. And, and the goal clearly is to build a global civilization based on shared values. Now it seems to me the only tool we need to do that is honest and open inquiry. And if faith is ever right about anything in this space, it's just right by accident. Thank you very much.